Hey, it's Joel. You know what? I read plenty of big things, things that take all sorts of time. And as an example, this, this was big. It was multiple pieces and it took a long time to print. Bullet Bill was huge and it took a long time to print. It's multiple pieces. This two-tone spaceship took a long time to print on the Raze 3DN 2 Plus. One piece, two colors. The ghosty here blah, took a long time to print. This giant representation of a Lego flower. It took a long time and it's a large print. Ooh, you remember this? Or this? Or this, the wine rack. It's a huge print and it's multiple colors and it took forever to make. Remember this guy? 99 hours and a sexy mane later and we have a two plus million view hairy lion. It's big and it took a long time. But what we're talking about here very specifically is the longest single piece print I've ever done. Like ever. And we're gonna talk about it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Ah, uh, welcome back. So I printed something, it's really big, and it took a really long time. In fact, it's the longest single piece 3D print I've ever made. Originally, I thought it was gonna take like nine days. It ended up taking seven days, some hours, some minutes, some seconds, I'm not worried about that. When it started, I teased it. I teased it on Twitter, and I teased it on Instagram, and it kept saying, this many days left, or this many days in, or oh, look at how this looks now, or wow, this is fun. I don't know, I don't even remember what all I said, but I'm sure Sean overlaid some really sweet images and videos right there, because that's what Sean does. Sean is awesome, hashtag Sean is awesome. It all started when uh, I believe it was my buddy Tom, who many of you know on the Twitters, as Filament Frenzy. He posted the city and he printed it and it was wonderful and I thought I should print that. So I did and it's done. Stop talking, Joel. Let's go get it. Here it is, here it is, it's here, it's here. It's right here. Oh, it turned out great. Oh, it turned out so good. Look at this. This was printed on the GMAX 1.5 XT Plus and I've got a build tax spatula here because I'm gonna remove it. Oh, this is gonna suck so, oh, wait a minute. I don't need that because this is a flex plate. Oh, steady, steady, steady. Oh, the magnets, oh, they're strong. Let's go get it off the build plate and take a look. <laughs> Ooh, oh, just kidding. I didn't trip, I didn't really trip because that would suck. Oh, that would suck. Yeah, okay, before we take it off the build plate, let's just admire it for a second. It is glorious. I'm gonna be the first to admit that it is not perfect, which is fine, which is fine, because I wasn't expecting it to be perfect, but it is really, really darn decent. Yes, yeah, spin, spin and rotate, look. Okay, let's get it off the build plate, and because this is a flexible build plate. It shouldn't be a problem. It's a satisfying sound anyway. Sean, turn up the microphone when this happens, okay? Oh, all that static electricity. Wow, it's heavy. It's got a good weight to it. About 2.2 kilograms, I think. Thank you, G-Max. Thank you, BuildTech build plate. We're gonna put you away for now. This is one of three monstrosities I love it, Monstrosities by Thinkiverse user Fernando. He's on the Twitters as well. Fernando Jerez? Jerez? I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right or butchering it horribly, but it is on the Twitters, Fer Jerez. And originally Tom Filament Frenzy posted one of these that he had printed. And I was like, I got this. We're gonna go bigger. And I did. You'll notice, you'll notice that there is some stringing the stringing is okay. There's also, there's these pieces that kind of get printed in this. So they, they kind of look like this over a dome and um, some of them got knocked over. Oh well, let's let's dive in, look a little bit deeper. In fact, wait, you know what? We've been through this before. We know how to get rid of stringing. 
we use a heat gun. Hey, Sean, I gotta, I gotta get rid of some of this stringing. Why don't you go ahead and run that sweet, sweet time lapse that I took of this thing while I get rid of the stringing? Don't worry, it's awesome. Our time lapse sponsor is Audio Jack. Do you ever need to take a break from your screen or from work or from life? Download the free app and listen to audio based movies that help reduce stress and anxiety and take your imagination on a ride like never before. Be sure to visit audiojack.com for more details. There we go. Some of that stringing was taken care of and we're good to go at this point. So this model by Fernando, one of three monstrosities that can be printed at any size. And I chose to go big on the G-Max. It's like I forgot some stringing there. I was having such a fun time with the heat gun. The model is, I wanna say, isn't it? I think this is, this is a, a fractal, is that right? This is a fractal where tiny things kind of morph into the bigger things but this is just it's it's amazing so the story is uh well here let me show you something oh dear my goodness what it's a failure i had a failure early on so i started with this model at 10 percent infill the problem is because you have such a large flat area it has to start laying down top layers <laughs> on top of that infill and if the infill isn't dense enough, then it's essentially trying to print some things in midair because it's trying to print in between where the infill lines are. And I got what is commonly referred to as a big giant layer shift. What? Yeah, it failed early on. I think what had happened was it laid down some filament in between some uh, infill lines and I believe that created a bump or a lump or a hump or some sort of ump that the nozzle as it went over it was larger than what the nozzle could hurdle and it ended up shifting the layers and I was like crap farts what this is terrible how do I fix this the easiest solution is to just increase the infill and normally I advocate against that because that's a terrible idea. It is using more plastic and it takes more time. But being that Cura told me this was going to take nine plus days, I thought that even though increasing the infill for the entire model is not the right solution, for me, it's the correct solution because if it's gonna take that long, I don't want a chance at failing. I don't want it to get to this point and then fail or layer shift when I'm not looking at it. Because when it's gonna go for nine plus days, I'm not gonna sit in my chair and stare at it for nine plus days. I'm not gonna do that. What I'm going to do is live my life. I'm going to wake up and eat breakfast, perhaps go for a walk, play with my kids, enjoy some television, maybe do household chores. Maybe, just maybe, I tried to enjoy myself instead of staring at the model for umpteen million hours and it worked because yeah, it came out okay. It came out okay. So the little sections that are, well, that are like right here and right here, I know it failed, but I'm okay with this because these are going to be easy enough to repair. In fact, we'll probably do that in just a little bit. I did notice right here that it did start to fail. I knocked a tiny piece off. Let's talk about that and then let's fix this. So it was starting to fail. So I used some CA glue and then I used some accelerant or accelerator or whatever to hold it in place. But I, I knocked over this little tiny detail right here. Let's just fix it. Let's fix it right now. We're gonna fix it right now. Here we've got our cyanoacrylate, the, the CA glue. I got the CA glue right here. Oh, why do these always stick? Oh boy. Okay, and I've got my, my Insta set. So, this tiny little piece right here. I think I don't need that much glue on it. 
Oh, 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 get back here. Oh, I almost put too much on. Okay, that's good. That's good. And then I put it in here. There we go. <laughs> that should work. <laughs> that should work. You may ask what I'm gonna be doing with this. And here's the idea. Uh, I got a buddy. His name is Bill Duran. Him and his lovely wife, they run a site, a, a channel, a learning experience. They call it Punish Props Academy. And they know how to airbrush really well. Whereas I don't. So what I want to do is airbrush this, maybe paint it, find some way to decorate it, to make it look even cooler. And then the goal is to make it find its way to New York so it can sit in the lobby of G Create's new office. That's the goal. All right, so what do we take from this? I, I always say I want to inspire and I want to educate and I want to do it all while we're having a really good time. Was this inspiring? I think it is. I think this is inspiring because I, I didn't hold back. I wanted to print something. I wanted to print it big and I did it. So if anything, take inspiration from this to not be afraid to print something really big or something that takes a long time on your 3D printer. We don't all have the same 3D printer. So take the proper precautions. And if you're using a material that probably isn't the best to huff while you're printing, then make sure you have ventilation. Make sure you have some sort of fire protection or fire elimination. We have household sprinklers and that takes care of it for me. Now for education. If I want to inspire and we check that box, what about education? Well, I think we learned a few things here. We learned that large flat models that need bottom layers to print over the infill are going to require a little bit more support than what a lower percentage of infill is going to require. We also learned that what you can do is use slicing programs that have variable infill abilities. So the bottom could be a thicker infill and then as it got to this level right here, you could reduce the infill to use less plastic. In the end, it took 2.2 kilograms worth of plastic. I had that. I had planned for that, so I was okay with that. But if you need to be more budget conscious about the plastic you send through your 3D printer, then you need to educate yourself in ways to save in the amount of plastic you use. Whether that's reducing perimeters, reducing infill, or just reducing the size. Personally, print it big. I like printing it big. See what you can get away with in vase mode. Be crazy. I love it. Finally, we've checked the box for inspiration. We've checked the box for education. Did we have a good time? Yeah, we did. We had a good time. It was amazing. I would post this to Twitter. I would post this to Instagram and it would get all sorts of likes and comments and people were like, whoa, and what, and cool, and what is it, and who are you, and stuff like that. So I, I was having a great time sharing the experience of printing this, and I think that others were having a good time following along in the progress. I know that in the end, we're looking at a video from me where I just printed something really big and then showed it to you. But I had a good time. I had a really, really good time printing this. I loved waking up and going to the printer to look and see where it was at. And I loved checking it right before bed and taking a mental picture of where it was. So when I woke up, I could be like, wow, it got this much further. Another thing that I found interesting is that when you have many, many small details on the X and the Y axes, it increases the time per layer an extraordinary amount. Once it got all of these bottom layers and it started printing these tiny, tiny, tiny little things, the layer time went excruciatingly high, like 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes per layer. It was crazy. Tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of retractions. Wow, it was just a lot of fun. Look, you know what? If you made it this far, you're awesome. A big thanks for watching. 
ring the bell, make sure you're subscribed. Don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, high five.